I put every monument in the world in Ohm. They're all max level and they're all usable by Ohm. Plus 10 discipline, easy. Tech discounts, not a problem. Enough goods produced to clothe the entirety of Europe? Quite possibly. This video is going to be a good one, and if you are excited for it, remember to like the video and subscribe for more content to come. And we're back, this time with a big, beefy ohm. Take a look at that. Every monument is magnificent. 15 dev, Grasslands Province. Take a look at these modifiers. 5% admin efficiency, 135% advisor cost. Artillery levels available versus four, plus five. 10% CCR. Cost to fabricate claims, 50%. Culture conversion cost, 70%. 20 discipline, 300 governing capacity and 25% governing capacity modifier. 50% idea cost. Look at that reform progress growth, 235%. They've even got a 35% tech cost modifier. Yeah, I think Ulm is gonna be doing okay this time around. And I did get rid of the natives this time around, mostly just for performance. That way, as we play through the game, it will load a little bit faster. But you guys know the drill. Let's pop it up to speed five and unpause the game. These mad lads are making 19 ducats every single month. Oh, yikes. Right. It's because of all the goods produced modifiers from this province. 16.7. The trade value over here is already really good in Vienna. And they're collecting seven ducats a month from that. Yeah, that's pretty good. And Ulm, getting their claims, has also just pushed a claim here on Augsburg, meaning Ulm is no longer a free city, and they are now currently making 26 ducats per month. Absolutely bonkers. And just as I was about to say, oh, hey, look, Ulm is allied to a couple of decent people over here, especially Bohemia. They attacked into Württemberg, who was allied to the emperor in Austria. They didn't call in any of their allies. I don't know if they plan to, but uh, it might be not so good for them. Though you do have to take a look and see, they did stack wipe two armies already. So eh, maybe they're a little bit better off than I'm giving them credit for. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this might be an issue for their enemies. Austria is over here sieging down Augsburg. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is taking quite a, quite a few minutes for them to siege just one province 174 day siege ticks you take a look at this number 474 yeah that's pretty crazy and then you pop over to ohm and you see 846 percent defensiveness that means their siege ticks are going to take like one year and they have a fort on their capital now these guys are absolutely going to dominate they're not going to get sieged down if they have a fort especially like a mountain fort it's never going to get touched this is going to be absolutely nuts yeah it looks like they wised up and called in their ally of bohemia evens out the numbers quite a bit definitely not 100 percent even but uh, better than it was before the only battle that's been lost was actually some condottieri that they hired from munich and uh they got stack wiped because you know reasons they just uh, separate pieced out Ingolstadt for um, for a full annex. So a uh, plus two to the Ulm province count. And the Bohemians are sieging down the Wieners. So yeah, probably not going to be much longer going on this war. Also, isn't it kind of funny that these guys have cannons, even though they don't have any cannons in their army? This is a misleading siege sprite. Now we've got peace once again. It looks like Ulm took this uh, Intel province with the gold mine away from Austria, as well as Stuttgart from Württemberg. So we're up to six provinces now, which is nuts considering the fact that we're only eight years in. It appears that all these modifiers are making Ohm feel nice and confident about their military prowess. And poor Austria over here involved in four wars right now, all of them being defensive, I believe, getting sieged down immediately after getting pieced out by Ohm in another war. So Austria may actually be crumbling this time around. It does look like they will retain their power, though uh, very barely. So we'll see how things go. Ulm continues to be aggressive here, attacking Memigan to take what I assume is both of these claims over here, rocking a very clean 20,000 men in the field. This right here truly may be the most blessed timeline. Yo, you guys have to see this. So they just recently finished out innovative ideas. And I was like, oh, wow, that 25% advisor cost is pretty good. I wonder what kind of advisors they're ruling. And then I looked over here, they have two level five advisors and a level three advisor, all of them under three ducats a month. Meanwhile, netting 66 ducats a month still, 31 per month just from trade alone. Because look at this, they own a large portion of the trade, only one trade center, but it's a level three, of course. And look at this, 48% of the Austrian charter. What in the heck, bro? Yo, Poland, are you okay? Honestly, what in the world is going on over here in general? These borders are absolutely nuts. Oh, oh. Looks like Moldavia was supported by Muscovy. 
and Mazovia was supported by the Ottomans. Now, Lithuania is still a junior partner, but they are 100% liberty desire because Poland has negative prestige and they are much more powerful than militarily and economically. Yikes. These guys are going down. It also looks like the Teutons are blowing up again. It seems like the Teutons are very powerful. The AI Teutons doing well at this patch. We might even see the Teutonic Holy Horde. Could you imagine? Meanwhile, it appears that uh, France is having a bad game as well, losing some of their provinces in the south to Aragon and in the north to Burgundy. And poor little Constans got attacked by Ulm as well with their ally of Burgundy as well as Austria joining them because they are a free city, of course. Numbers look mm, pretty even considering, but uh, we already know that Ulm's morale stuff is going to pull through and uh, yeah, they're going to they're going to dominate. There's I have no doubt. Oh, wow. Austria is an OPM in Vienna now. Everybody got in on it. You got Hungary, Silly, Salzburg, even Styria popped out. And of course, Ulm took some land in the mountains. Looks like Venice also took a bit of land over here in Slovenia. So yeah, Ulm is looking pretty good, taking up quite a bit of land over here in Venice as well as in Austria, as well as, you know, the entirety of Italy. <laughs> Aragon has taken a little bit more land up here as well as Burgundy, and it looks like France is actually gone. Now I gotta be careful because my editor is French, uh, so I'm obligated to say that this is tragic. We still have French nation, just not France the nation. England uniting the Isles looking quite good, but they gotta contest the Danes up here in the Highlands. As far as the colonial game, you got the English up here in Canada in Newfoundland. Bermuda is a Portuguese colony, as well as a large chunk of the Caribbean going to the Portuguese. And the Portuguese down here colonizing Argentina with New Granada formed by Castile. Oi, Rot over here doing pretty good. Gobbled up Mongolia, their subject, as well as a large chunk of Manchuria. Ming still hanging in there. Borders are exactly the same as 1444. It's always a good day when Bengal gets gobbled up by their neighbors. And aside from that, India is still a bit of a mess, but uh, Delhi in the north, Vijay in the south, as well as Orissa in the east. And then over here to the west of India, you got the Timurids looking pretty good. Their subjects all still under them, and uh, they are growing quite a bit in different directions. Muscovy is doing pretty good over here in Russia. Poland is doing not good over here in Poland, losing a large chunk of their territory to the Teutons, Bohemia, as well as Moldavia and a couple of other random tags like Kiev over here. But we do have a rare tag over here in Zaforozhia. A very cool tag, little uh, horde republic kind of deal. And the Ottomans are doing the Ottoman thing, murking their way down into Egypt. It's a bummer we can't see the Ottomans collapse every episode like we have in the past couple of weeks. But you know, we'll take what we can get. Aragon is independent. They are not a subject of Castile. So it looks like we are not going to see Spain formed diplomatically this time around. Though Ulm is developing like an absolute machine. Look at this. Their lowest dev province is 29 over here. Uh, 28, actually. 28. But aside from that, their capital is at 58. Because I was looking through it, and a lot of these actually are affected by the monuments. So you can see the monuments are giving them bonuses to the dev cost in this specific area. And then they've got a couple that will give it to their entire country, but not that many. As far as the great power list goes, no surprise. Actually, I'm a little surprised. Ulm is the number one here in 1508 with over 1,000 development, more than Muscovy, as well as the Ottomans. Though if the Ming were to embrace the institution, they would bump Ulm down to number two. Then with about half that development, you got England, Castile, Portugal, and the Timurids below them. And I did miss this as well. Ferrara is a march of Ulm. Very cool. The Reformation is also here. It looks like we've got one over here in Burgundy, one in England, and one in Denmark. Though I think we already know that England is going to spawn the Church of England and then reconvert all these provinces and then have a bunch of mismatch of Protestant and Anglican provinces because the AI likes to do that, I guess. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I do love a good formable. We've actually got a couple on the screen. We've got Swabia as well as Spain. And speaking of Swabia, it looks like they have uh, kind of kicked in the Ottomans' teeth and are doing it again because Caraman was released as an independent nation. And uh, yeah, maybe the Ottomans have met their maker. Meanwhile, Oirat and Jonzu are both munching away at the Ming. And apparently Diviet has also grabbed a couple of provinces down here in the south. Arissa is in a fight for its life against Vijay, looking to unite central and eastern India under one banner. Portugal and Spain are both in South Africa, with no colonizers yet in Indonesia as well as Down Under. We do have a Spanish Brazil this time around, and Rio de Prata has formed, but it looks like they're having some rebel issues. The Portuguese Caribbean continues to consolidate, and to go with our Newfoundland, we also have a 13 colonies. But we can't count out the Frisians, looks like Massachusetts is going to be speaking a funny dialect this time around. But this is a new one, that is a big 
big New Spain. Looking good. And aside from all that, Great Britain has united the Isles and Bohemia is definitely pushing their borders quite a bit. We also have a Franconia that is formed, which I always like formable, so Franconia is cool with me. As far as the HRE goes though, it doesn't look like the Imperial Authority is gonna be going up anytime soon. There was zero reforms passed and uh, yeah. This one's basically done for the HRE. Only 27 princes left and we're only 100 years in. Sad HRE noises. But uh, yeah, I am curious to see how this goes for them. Looks like it is to take Kosovo. It appears Kosovo is Swabia this time. But oh my gosh, those numbers are significantly, significantly in favor of Swabia and their boys. And again, just look at this development map mode. You can see Swabia's lands from space. Compared to everything around it, it's just so green. We've got quite a few blobs here in 1616. Swabia, of course, in the number one spot, but Spain, who controls like half of the new world, rocking the number two spot. And then way, way, way below that is Portugal with Bohemia, Russia, Great Britain, Burgundy, and the Ottomans after that. Ottomans all the way down to 700 and 55 dev. The main reason being because the Ottomans have a target on their back from both Swabia as well as now a very large, strong Russia. But yeah, they don't stand a chance. They're absolutely getting demolished. Swabia rocking 619,000 men with their max manpower almost quadruple anybody else in the entire world. That's pretty nuts. But look at the Emperor of Bohemia. He's still having a pretty solid game. I mean, I'm not going to count him out just yet. No, I'm just kidding. I am going to count him out. Portugal is allied to Swabia, but uh, nobody else really. Livonian Order and Riga, apparently. Bohemia is allied to quite a few people, but it doesn't look like it's anybody that matters. Oirat over here absolutely gobbling up China, but we can't count out Dive yet. Uh, okay, well, actually, maybe maybe we can count out Dive yet. They're, yeah, they're getting destroyed right now. They're actually the Emperor. Okay, and uh, it looks like Oirat is trying to... Um, trying to take that from them, yoink it, so to speak. India is still a mess, but the Timmies have formed the Mughals. Though, judging by the borders, it looks like Russia does not really like the Mughals. Congo is Central Africa. We've got a British Guinea surrounded by Phrygian Guinea in Phrygian Angola. South America is mostly Spanish with a couple of Portuguese on either side. Of course, we have our Portuguese Caribbean, but aside from that, it looks like Spain is in control. Florida over here has eaten up the 13 colonies, and all we have left is Vinland and Newfoundland in the north. Though I am obligated to tell you that the left coast has been colonized by the Spanish and the people with green hair trying to burn down police stations speak Spanish in this timeline. A bit of a renaissance for the French as they have reformed their nation. But uh, yeah, something tells me that their neighbors are a little too strong for them. Swabia going for that Mary Nostrum, eating up 90% of the Ottomans lands and uh, looks like they are currently making their way up into Russia. They have also united a very large chunk of Germany. Somehow Lubeck has decided that uh, Denmark looked tasty and ate up all of their lands. That is the lands that didn't go to Sweden because Sweden is losing their own territory to the Russians. Africa's actually a couple of blobs, which is cool. We've got a Somalia, a Jene, Air over here in Central Africa. Looks like they've actually even taken some land from the British. The Congo, Mutapa down here competing with uh, Spain as well as Portugal in South Africa. VJ is in the south of India and the Mughals are the entirety of the north. We've got a Prom over here, not to be confused with Rome. This is the better version and Oirat has united most of China. They have the mandate and they actually have mandate growth. Now, will that persist? Eh, only time will tell, but they do have at least one reform pass. So I don't know. South America is Spain in the north and Portugal in the south and Swedish Canada right next to Vinland, right next to Newfoundland, which is a very skinny boy now because Spain has decided that Canada is its colonial domain as well. We do have an Iceland and it does seem that the Anglican faith was not chosen this time around and they remain Protestant. So we've got Protestant over here, Protestant over here, reformed on the coasts and then Catholic on the interior. Most of the new world is Catholic, except for Canada is Protestant. And in the end, there's some things that are probably not going to be too surprising. But then again, there's probably some stuff that will be. Swabia here in the number one spot, well over double Spain. And then Portugal, VJ, Russia, France, Scandinavia, and Ayutthaya rounding out the number eight spot. Economic hegemon of the world, fully stacked Swabia. <laughs> no surprise there. Economic is the easiest one to get. And to be honest with you, it's Probably the best, in my opinion, as well. The goods produced and the governing capacity alone make it like S tier. As I said, the French had a bit of a comeback here. Uh, somebody formed them and then they ended up going up north and, um, you know, Franco-British Union sort of deal. I don't know how it happened, but uh, yeah, they integrated Great Britain in their entirety. And then just a little bit over here to the east. Yeah, 
Swabia took and uh, consolidated all of Germany, or at least all of, you know, central northern Germany, southern Germany, Austria, that sort of vicinity. Scandinavian Poland was not something that I was expecting, but we got it. We also got Lithuania Hinterpolmen, or however that's pronounced up in here. Swabia made their way all the way over into Ibiza and Barcelona. So kind of nuts to think that they were as strong as they were. And I also think it's hilarious that they ended up leaving Roma alone, right? It's like, oh, you know, let the, let the Pope man have his eternal city, you know respect the religion and all that. Russia had a really strong mid game and in the late game seems like they fell apart. I think Swabia kind of punched them hard enough that they had some rebels and uh, weakened them enough that they could get beat up on by some other people. But I think my favorite thing that I've seen so far today was, yeah, Ayutthaya, they, they did pretty good. Yeah, they got Borneo. Yeah, they got Java. They got Sumatra. They got a lot of Southeast Asia. They even got all the way over into Bengal. But VJ got over into the uh, mm, far east, apparently which includes most of coastal mainland China and Korea, and then a very large portion of Japan even. Australia was Portuguese. South America was about the same as the last time we looked. We finished with mostly Spain in the north and Portugal in the south. And the north is a bit more of the same. Caribbean is Portuguese, and then the, rain, and then the mainland is almost exclusively Spain, but we do have Scandinavian Canada as well as Vinland up in the north. And somehow the south side of the bay is um, Ayutthaya. We've got some Ayutthaya's here in San Francisco. The religious map mode is a bit of a mess, but uh, it doesn't look super, super different compared to the last time we saw it. We got Protestants up here as well as over here, Catholics over here, all the way down into the Horn of Africa. So I think this is probably the more interesting part is that Sunni Islam was kind of snuffed out. To be honest with you, Islam as a whole was kind of snuffed out this time around. Hinduism rules the day over here in India, as well as Korea and China. Orthodox from Russia, no surprise there, but we can't forget uh, the Grand Republic of Kazakhstan. You know, Kazakhstan, greatest country in the world. All other countries are run by little girls. New World is Catholic in the South and Catholic in the North, except for Scandinavia's colonies. And they actually did a really good job this time of actually converting. In one of my previous videos, the USA controlled like all of this and it was all totemist except for like a couple, like five or six provinces along the coast. So that's cool. I like that the AI will convert. Culturally, yeah, about more of what you would expect. The New World is Iberian. It's all Iberian. America is mostly Mexican, which is hilarious and I love it. South America is Brazilian as well as this Platinian. We do have a bit of American and English culture over here on the East Coast, mostly up in Canada and around the Great Lakes. Looks like the Austrians did a bit of culture converting as well as the Venetians just to the south of them. The Lombards definitely did some culture conversion over here. A bit of Hellenization over here in Turkey definitely occurred as well as all the way up into Bulgaria. I'm pretty sure they kicked the Bulgars out of Bulgaria. To be honest with you, our poor Romanians are basically gone. I didn't know that Transylvanian was its own culture. Is that new? Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm just being dumb. A bit more Balton culture over here, which uh, in my previous video I said it's literally just this province here. So some culture conversion definitely happened. The poor Czechs have been pushed back to just a couple of provinces over here. Take a look at this. Bavarian had a bit of a push as well. We have one Castilian province here and one or two down here with Portuguese in the south of Africa and a decent chunk of Somali culture because there was a big strong Somalia. But uh, as you can see, yeah, they got completely gobbled up by uh, Swabia, you know, <laughs> no surprise. In the end here, they finish with some very solid modifiers, 165% advisor costs, 89% aggressive expansion impact, 100% blockade efficiency, and it's safe to say they have a very loyal clergy. 35% CCR as they took admin ideas, 95% culture conversion cost, and the fact that they didn't culture convert is a bit of a missed opportunity in my opinion. And in the end, Ulm with all of the monuments, came out on top. No doubt they were the strongest nation in the world. I'm not super surprised about it, but I am excited we got to see the journey they took. If you guys did enjoy that video, please make sure to leave a like on it. If you have a friend who you think might enjoy the video, as I said in the intro, go ahead and share this video with them and subscribe if you haven't already, because there is plenty of content you're missing out on if you are not subscribed. If you want early access to every single video that comes out on this channel, you can check out my Patreon. $5 a month will get you early access to every video, as I said. If you want to join my Discord, my subreddit, which is a pretty cool community over there, follow me on my Twitter, see what I have to say. You can check those links out all in the description below the video. If you have any ideas of videos that you would like to see, make sure you leave them in the comments down below. And uh, that is all I've got for you for today. So until next time, stay chill.